Hall of Fame. We got people, we got great food, we got comedians, we got everything that we need to have a good time. Please follow us on all platforms. Your Instagram live, and we doing it up, okay? I am your Red Puff host, Lance Gardner. What were some things that helped you build in the industry then? Everybody stopped telling me no. Okay. I can't do it for you. Say it one more time, one more time. Everybody kept telling me no. Okay. I can't do it for you. How much money you got? Right. I ain't got time for you. So I had to go and get my own equipment, sit down and get on YouTube and learn all this stuff. YouTube tells you anything and yeah. show you anything. So everybody out there that needs some guidance, go to YouTube. There's some smart right. people out there. And, go to uh, work. And just learn. Don't even have to take the advice. Just learn. Right. You know, it's all about learning. And you're only going to learn when you do it. Right. No matter how much books tell you how to do it, mm -hmm. if you don't go out there and do it, mm -hmm. you ain't going to do it. Let me ask you about the UNG Platform Comedy Awards. How important do you think that is right here in 2021 for underground, underground comedians? I think it's real good that Man Man been doing this for five years, helping unknown comics, helping comics that are known, Get get on a platform of being seen. Hey, you know, I, I give him. I'm, I'm here for him. Yes. He know it. Keith Morris is here for him. Right. He ain't never had to give me a dime. He ain't never had to ask me twice. Awesome. And I said, man, I'm here to help you build this up. That's and that's what we gonna do. That's awesome. Well, brother, it's definitely a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to seeing All your right. great work and your talent. Uh, you gonna see it. Is there anything <laughs> else you would like to share with the fans of UNG Radio Station? If any of your baby mamas out there think I'm your baby daddy, you a damn lie. Uh, <laughs> you want your stimulus <laughs> check on my brother. I feel you. Hey, peace and love, you guys. My yes, name is Chief Look Around More, and I've got a great host here, you guys. Show Thank him some you so love. Much, my brother. Keep looking around. Building at the fifth annual UNG Comedy Awards. It's such an honor to be here. I'm so excited. You know what I'm saying? We out yeah. here. Yeah. This Kanisha, so for uh -huh. the tonight, uh -huh. yes. what were some of the things that you thought about when it was time to, to get ready for the UNG Comedy Awards and the importance of that to you? Well, one, I was like, I'm going to take off my mask and raw dog some air real quick. Let me get it. Let me get it. I like my mask. You know, I, I like to protect this thing. So. Like we all wet and stuff. I feel like Mortal Kombat. I know, I know. Get over here every time I put it on. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I was so excited because I'm actually one of the last minute ads to the show. Okay. So, you know, when somebody appreciates you and sees your value. So what happened is they were doing the, the um, what's it called? The competition. And I had seen it, and it was like, Kanisha Bust, 10%. Man, I was like, oh, they got me 50 shades of right, fucked right, up. Right. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. So I get on the internet, and yeah. I'm like, hey, look at this was going on. And I'm telling you, within six hours, I went to the lead, but then I fell back down, and I lost it to Carl Williams, right. who is an ex you know, exactly. amazing comedian. But the fact that we were side by side, like, with the final six hours, I just came from 10% to and that's good. pretty much matching. So I think it's so exciting and so dope to have a platform like this to honor comedians um, that maybe a lot of people don't know, to give more people exposure and just be like, yo, comedy is happening. We appreciate you. We love you. Yeah. So I'm so excited to be here. I really am. When did you know that comedy was your thing, that it was just not you was a funny girl, you could crack some laughs, but it was your thing? The crazy part is, so... I used to be at the comedy shop in Seattle. I'm from Seattle, Washington. So, hey, I'm coming. Somebody hire me. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was my boyfriend at the time, I used to work for the comedy shop. So I would be like, pick people up from the airport. I just loved to laugh. I grew up watching comedy. I've always loved it. I never thought I could be a comedian, but I loved the atmosphere. So my boyfriend at the time was really funny. So I start managing him. And one day we went to the iconic comedy underground in Seattle. And he was like, I dare you to go up. And I'm like, if you dare me to do some right. shit, I'm doing it. I'm like, right. shit, I can go up. Get to know. Hey, trust me. <laughs> it's got me in a lot of trouble. And um, so um, he was like, good, because you're going up in 20 minutes. So I'm like, okay, shit. So I wrote, and you only get three minutes at a, at a first time. Right? Right. But I'm like writing my three minutes out, and I got up there, and I fell in love. It was a high I had never felt. Like, I've always been on stage. I've always been in acting, but I never did just stand up. And the feeling I got was so good, he going to go back and tell the comedy shop. So uh, Anthony Tibbs, he got, and I know you guys know Ralph Porter who, and Key Lewis, who are mentors of mine, they are like, you going up, you got 10 minutes on the next show. So my sorority sisters, everybody packed that bitch out. It was no, people were sitting on the floor. I did my 10 minutes. 
And that shit rocked and changed my entire life. And I moved to L.A., and to this day, my ex calls me and tells me I stole his life. Ah, exactly. He's just like, you stole my whole life. Blah, 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 blah. But it was, a, it was a gift I didn't even know I had. It was such a natural ability. I was like, oh, this is my shit. So what are some things that you have going on right now at the present time that we can look forward to? Well, big thing is, I know that um, I became vegan three years ago. I know people are probably like, damn, that's a big-ass vegan. You're vegan. glowing, though. You're glowing. That's what being a vegan, you got to glow, baby. You got to glow. Yeah. You know, but, we you know, it's fat vegans out there because we just don't eat, you know, we, I be on bullshit. Right. That's you still eat fish. You still eat fish. No, I don't be eating fish. Oh, okay. No, I'm all, I am vegan, but niggas don't know Oreos is vegan. So that's what I'm fucking up at. But, <laughs> but I am a lot. <laughs> Vegan. And when people think veganhood is, is like salads and bullshit, if you follow my page, anything you want, I can flip vegan. I be making everything, Philly cheese, steaks, I mean, all type of stuff. So my cookbook is coming out, and the hard part is I don't measure, so that's why it's, it's taking a while. But I got a vegan cookbook to come out. Some of my older stuff, uh, right now, Kanisha versus John C., uh, All Death Digital, Russell Simmons Network, I have a show over there. Okay. Um, I'm always on Shade 45 over at um, Sirius XM, because I used to have a morning show. On Jamie Foxx's network, so now I switched over to Shade 45, so I'll be over there on the All Out show. Um, I do a lot of stuff with All Dev Digital. We're filming all the time, even under these conditions and yeah. so many freaking COVID tests. So I, that's a good place to get me and uh, Momish, M O M underscore I S H underscore Momish or Kanisha Bus on social media. I have a lot of stuff going up. I have a new unboxing um, show coming out that uh, should be hitting the airwaves soon. And exactly, unboxing, what are you doing? Unboxing is me opening shit and going, ah, oh, this shit is cracking. Did you see this? <laughs> like, they can send me a whole deal, though. I like it. I like it. I'm coming out the box, y'all. Hey, oh, hey. Just had a jacket on. That's it. Know, that's it. Like, and yeah, the socks, I got to have the grip. And yeah. the tie, because, you know, I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tell me about the cooking book. Well, the cookbook basically is a beginner's guide to veganism because a lot of people still want to eat good. So I'm doing, like, stuff. Bell peppers, enchiladas, everything you can think of. And I do a show on Instagram so that you can see it, but the book will be out shortly. It's called Fat Vegan. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like you it. know, the awesome. Eater's Guide to Veganism, basically. So one more time, where our fans can find you. Okay. Um, you can find me at Kanisha Bus. I got a white mom, so it's K-A-N-I-S-H-A. Don't got the E in it. B-U-S-S on all social media platforms, on YouTube, everything else. Or for parents, I have Momish, which is M-O-N underscore I-S-H underscore. Shout out, fuck these kids. So just <laughs>
to y'all new jacks that can get out here and make a five minute video, you know what I'm saying? Get on that stage and let's see what you got. You know what I'm saying? I got 20 plus years worth of material and I'm writing every single day, every single moment I'm creating new stuff and I know how to put a punchline in. I know how to set up premise. You know what I'm saying? You boys better study. You know what I'm saying? See what the OGs is doing in order to be able to grasp what we have and use it and make purpose. We have a, a main, we have a crazy platform right now. We can literally put our own cameras up and make our own stuff. So let's study to make sure we're not putting out no garbage product. You know what I'm saying? That's real talk, y'all. Okay. Now, when you think about comedy, mm -hmm. what's some things or some, well, some people that inspire you as a comedian? I'm going to tell you who I, I really look, look to um, as inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, cats like Eddie Murphy, cats like Kevin Hart. The reason why I look to those cats is because even God, you know, take care of him, Bill Cosby, you got to really look at people's careers who've had longevity in this game people who aren't on drugs, using out there in the streets doing wildness and craziness. You know, because we are on stage being entertainers, people think that we, like our lives are wild and crazy. Like, I, my thing is like sitting at home with my kids chilling, you know what I'm right. saying? On stage, I'm a, it's a whole nother thing. But comedians that know how to differentiate the two. On stage, my stage life is my stage life. My home, my life, when I'm doing me by myself, it's a whole different life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, who are some people that you would like to work with that's comedians right now? Well, you know, Eddie already know, man. I'm his nephew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I met him a couple of times, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, hey, I'm telling you, Will Smith, look, yo, Will, I'm telling you, nigga, I'm the freshest prince. You better check for a nigga, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm coming to get you, man. I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? I'm with the big boy. Hold on, I ain't finished. You asked me who I was working with. You know what I'm saying? I want all the niggas to look alike. Tell me how where you at. Larry Fishburne, where you at? Denzel, what you want to do, huh? What you what you want to do? I even want to work with Bill Clinton. I'll tell you what, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I'm trying to work with all you big niggas. That's what I'm saying. Come on, man. I'm just messing with you. Thank you, man. Thanks for welcoming me back. You're welcome to me back. I love you, my brother. I love it. It's always a pleasure. It really is, man. It really is. Man. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. I appreciate sure. that. And the same back to you, man. Thank you, my Straight brother. up. Straight Is there up. anything else you want to tell the comedians out there? Man, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. Stay creative, man. Create, 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 man. It's something, like I'm going to tell you, a lot of people think about money. People talk about money and contracts. I'm going to tell you something, man. It's a genuine joy that, that touches my soul. Just create. Create, man. Do it for the love, man. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you dead and gone, your money ain't going to be there, but your creations will. One more time. <laughs>
but down and watch everybody else. And then one night, because uh, Wood, doctor sent me to Rob West's spot. And, uh, so I went, Rob put me up, I did three minutes, set my butt down. Rob came over there, what you get off for? I said, because I did my three minutes. He was like, no, you're going to come back next week and you're going to do eight minutes. And I'm like, you must really think I'm trying to be a comedian. And there it was. But I came yeah. back and I actually did ten minutes and it's just been trickling since then. How's the growth of comedy life, you think? How 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 has that grown? Because, you know, we got so many streaming services and then you don't have too many live shows anymore and then you got COVID, you know. Tell us about that impact. Well, that's why I'm on Zoom. Just to keep, you know, uh, our name out there, work on material, um, you know, I've come across many who say I don't do Zoom, but, you know, what you really have now, you know, so at least keep your name out there, you can work on some new material, you know, and um, get a new fan base because with all other comedians, they have guests that's on that never saw you before or, or heard of you. But, you know, and there's so many comedians out there now, uh, it's hard to keep track with everybody, you know, so it's good to, to be here because I haven't seen Kanisha in a long time. And I'm so proud of her. I saw her uh, interview you did uh, on you and yeah. And I'm like, look at her. I knew she was a new mommy. Yeah. But yeah, she's Without still her. working hard. So That's yeah. awesome. So tell us about some, some female comedians that inspired you to just go ahead on and move forward with this. You know, the, the first one I did in the 90s, it was Sherry Shepard. Okay. Yeah, and so now, uh, you know, these days, you know, you have a good comedian like Kamisha, Coco Brown, um, uh, Chocolate Storm, you right. know, and it's, 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 it's just, I, I admire so many people. And sometimes I hear stuff and I'll be like, I didn't think of that. I do that yeah. all the time, you know, or I may have something that's similar to somebody too, okay. you know. So, but I, I like a lot of people. That's good. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing your work and following you. And if there's anything I can do as well to be a part of your success, you let me know. One more time for our Thank fans. You. Let us know where we can find you. Okay, I'm on Instagram, <coughs> Twitter, and Facebook. Everything's Regina Ivory. And that's I-V-E-R-Y. They took the O off the black people because the white people said uh, Ivory, I-V-O-R-Y was pure. So they changed their slaves to I V E R Y. All right, so she educated you about it. Yes, I'm educating you. Yes. I love and it. And I got Thank educated you. off of uh, Trey Love uh, jumpsuit. I mean, it's hey, it was right. I was like, what? Yeah, they were bringing it back to like the 90s up in here. Thank you so much, man. Uh, good. Appreciate you. There you go. There you go. There you go. Right there. There you go. Right there. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Can you mention each other? Come on, baby. It's a great time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Come on, baby, Mize, baby, baby, Mize. How you doing? Hey, hey, it's so hey. good to see you. How are you doing? Definitely. How always you looking doing? good and fabulous. Yeah. As always. Yeah. Always. Didn't I spend you the last time I yes. seen you, girl? Yes. So, cut it out. So, cut it out. Yeah. So, baby, Mize, how you been? I've been doing good. Instagram, uh, you know what I'm saying, you know, I'm a hairstylist, so 
here in my bedroom eyes, I do slay and I lay. You know what I'm saying? Go to work around here. Go to work around here. So, you know here. Go to work so here. it's, it's kind of fun because I used I can, you know, right. do hair and do comedy at the, the same, same time. time. Why so, you scratch the scalp? Yeah. Just like, I got a joke for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to need to talk about you, but you ain't going to know. I like it. Definitely. How is the UNG Comedy Awards? What does that mean to you, the importance of it? Okay, for one, this is like the ultimate best because for a comedian like me, I'm, I'm getting out there every year. I almost still an award. I end up getting one. I ain't stole nobody awards yet. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? Today might be the day I, I might steal somebody award. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if I'm getting my award. I'm stealing somebody <laughs> award. So just know if you go home without one and I go home with one, you know who got your That's award. It. That's it. You know, but. Doing more. this as the last Friday, I've been hosting, so you know what I mean? You're like in my spot right now. See, you know I, mean? am, I am, I am. <laughs> like, you just first on my spot. The last spot. show, like, I was like over, over here with it. Like, yeah, because I'm normally hosting we and, and telling jokes after the And show. I was so watching and I this was This is a learning, transition so for, you. this is a transition yeah. where I'm the interviewer. Yeah, I'm honored. The interviewing. I am so honored. Yeah. Definitely. Because <laughs> so, I was watching you and I was like, okay, picking up some tips, scratching my head. You know what I'm saying? Getting that hat together, you know what I'm saying? From such a great person like Bedroom Eyes. We love you so much here at the UNG radio station. We're happy to have you here at the Comedy Awards, okay? I'm not going to hold you too much longer, yeah. but we got to get your social media one more time for the people, baby. Okay, so definitely I want you guys to go on my YouTube page. You know what I'm saying? Bedroom Eyes uh, Comedian page. I do have a lot of little platform shows I done did. Keep me relevant, guys, and keep me on the stage. Hey. Um, so also Facebook, Instagram, definitely Instagram, Facebook. I can't say no more. Like, That's give it. my main platforms, yeah. you know, and TikTok. And TikTok. Get me on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Thank TikTok. you so much. Tell our fans a little bit about yourself, ma'am, and your name, please. Okay, hi, you guys. I'm comedian Tamiko Kirkland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just like uh, Bedroom Eyes, I do hair. This is, you know, I started doing comedy. This is for... You know, just for my like my therapy. You know, yeah. I love doing comedy. It's, it's an adrenaline rush. You know, I just I do it to have fun. I do hair to make money. Yeah. Uh, you know. I hold. I'm just kidding. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. I'm hey. Downtown LA, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, but uh, let <laughs> me stop playing. I'll play some. 
much. You can find me on Facebook, Tamiko Kirkland on Facebook. I also have IG, Love of Comedy. That's L U V, Love of Comedy. I don't have Twitter. I don't do the rest of that stuff. Okay. Other than that, that's it. It was so good to have you here Thank with you and your time We're looking forward to hearing your work and seeing great stuff Thank from you, you from Thank the you. future. You Thank look amazing. You. Thank Dude, you. Who's hot, girl. Ooh, Go ahead. Thank you. All right, now, now, we bring in a very special guest to the UNG Comedy Awards, you know. I got to let him introduce himself, but I cannot let him introduce himself because I'm the red carpet host, and I'm bringing Mad Man to the red carpet. Mad Man to the UNG Comedy Awards number five, not number one, number five, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing, man? Appreciate uh, all the love and support from everybody. I want everybody to know. Uh, I really appreciate you guys, you know what I'm saying? We've been doing this for five years. Appreciate you supporting the amazing comedians that came up here and talked to the Big Brother Lunch. And, um, hey, get prepared to rock for the live stand-up. Don't go nowhere. We'll be going live with stand-up in exactly 15 minutes. You can see it live on YouTube at the B-Side Show or on Instagram at UNG Radio Station. We're going to have Keep Look Around Morris. We're going to have TC. We're going to have Kanisha. We're going to have Bedroom Eyes. It's going down. Tonight's show is sponsored by Bobby Buck. Mad yes. Man, yes. what made you go ahead and move forward with such a platform like this? Because people want to know, brother. I'm going to slow you down for just a second. Tell us what made you actually say, you know what? I'm going to put my money behind this, and I'm going to pull this off with or without anybody. Hey, that's a deep one. Well, um, I opened up the radio station to, to get my music played. Okay. And as time went by, God showed me a different light where people started knocking at my door right, to get their music played. Okay. I was going down Hollywood Boulevard trying to knock on doors to get my music played. But when I opened the radio station up and went the other way around, people started knocking at my door to get their music played. Right. Then I seen I can uh, help moms and pop stores advertise their commercials. I can play poetry. I can play comedians. So I started doing shows. You know what I'm saying? Right. I started having comedian comedy shows, hip-hop shows poetry shows, etc., etc. Then all of a sudden it hit me in the brain. You need to throw some awards because a lot of these unsigned artists don't know what it is to get on a red carpet. They don't know what it is to win a trophy. Right. So it, it means went, a lot. Right, right. So one thing to another, next thing you know, boom, you I had already been doing UNG comedy on the radio every Thursday. Okay. For the last ten years. Okay. Right, but I never did the awards. Okay. So I was like, man, BET not around anymore. The Grammys ain't supporting, they only support the majors, they don't support the people in the middle or the right, right. So let's get it. You know let's what I'm saying? And I've been doing it ever since. Know the word. It's nothing but mad love, and I appreciate everybody that's rocking man. with us yeah. every day. You heard it from the man himself, Mad Man U N G Radio number five. Not number one, number five. Let's get it. Go to work. Go I am your very popular host. Hey, y'all get ready to tune in for some live stand-up from Trey Love. Kanisha Bush and Bus, the one and only Bedroom Eyes, yeah. Regina After Five, yeah. Tamiko Kirkland, yeah. keep yeah. looking around for us, baby, yeah. and many, many more. Holla! Yeah. 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 Shout out to our sponsors, GG Sweet, for providing the alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rock with yeah. us every Wednesday night. She's live in the mix, going hard in the paint. Yeah. Get your music played with her. Also, Bedroom Eyes sponsored tonight's show with the catering. We got Louis catering in the building. We got good yeah. food right here. And we also got some gifts for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And also, it's sponsored by UNG Radio Station and yeah. one and only Bobby Buck. Bobby Buck on the red carpet every year. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go out there and support Bobby Buck. You know what I mean? Peace. Yeah. Doing the awards for five, and God has blessed me with a platform to help the comedians out, and they've been really stepping up and helping me out. So it's a teamwork, it's not about me, it's about family. This is the UNG Comedy Awards. Tonight, we're gonna have some giveaways, we got some trophies, some amazing comedians. We're going hard in the paint, you know what I'm saying? I uh, apologize for us starting a little bit late, but hey, we here, and shout out to everybody that's rocking with us, you know what I'm saying? All right, now, once again, y'all, come on, make some noise, UNG Comedy Awards! <laughs> Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to present an award. We're going to bring up one of the leaders from the shoe gang, better known as Doc J, to present this night's nice yeah. Yep, 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 yep. How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Yep, I go by the name of Doc J from the shoe gang, and uh, blessing to be here at UNG Comedy Awards. And I mean, uh, so what we're going to do is I got one for the top supporting actor. It goes to Zay Pay. Zay Pay can't be here, you know what I mean? So I'm going to accept it on his behalf, and I retire from stealing people's shit like 
two years ago, so it's a good hand, you know what I mean? Zay Pay. Now, let me explain something about that, um, that award right there. All right, for those who don't know, I did not create the category. I created the categories, but I did not put the, the comedians in the category. I went on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I asked family and friends, who do you think needs to be nominated? Everybody knows our big brother, Cat Williams, but people might not know the little comedians. So I said, let's support the, 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 the medium or up-and-coming comedians. And we put them all on Twitter, and the world voted for these people okay. to win, okay? Now, if you notice, I've been doing comedy uh, every Thursday. I've been having a show where I talk about comedy. So on Thursday nights, we discuss the different parts of comedy. In 2021, you have a lot of young cats on YouTube making skits. All right? And they think that the skits is actual big comedy, which it is. It's keeping us happy, you know, while we're in quarantine, you get a laugh. But it's not stage show. And stage show is something else, you know what I'm saying? It's super large. So it is a difference. And that brother Zay Pay, he does YouTube skits. He's the best supporting actor on YouTube. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you've been seeing him on these little skits and having some fun. You know what I mean? So with that said, you know what I'm saying? We got our first comedian coming to the stage. You know what I'm saying? By the one and only, straight out of Compton, California. Let's give it up, y'all. Make a good noise. Make her feel good. One and only, Tamiko Curl. <laughs> married 25 years to this nigga and I just catch this nigga cheating on me not too long ago. That's some fucked up shit. Like 22 years ago and shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, fuck that because you know damn well what a mad black woman 22 years ago can become 22 minutes ago uh, fucking yeah. around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this motherfucker walking around singing rap songs in the car and shit. Got me. That's when I realized I was real fucked up in my head because we were driving to one of my shows. He in the car, he was like, I got two of my bitches in the club, hey, they don't know about each other. I'm driving, I was like, nigga, what? <laughs> Who the fuck, did you make that up, motherfucker? You got two of your bitches in the club and you's a cheating ass nigga, motherfucker. You know, you need to be singing about how love should have brought your little black ass home last night. You know what I'm saying? That's what you should be singing about. That's how I feel in my spirit and shit. It's crazy because, um... Being cheated on and shit, you know, from a woman. We, I think we become bitter and mean about that shit because moral, women that got morals, we don't go out and be fucking other dudes and, and, and go get some get back. But I just thought, maybe if I did, let this kitten meow somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if I let, <laughs> maybe if I let the kitten cat purr elsewhere, I might feel better about myself. He ain't got to know. I don't want to lose the nigga, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what I did was I told myself, I need a grown ass man. You know what I'm saying? I'm 48 years old. I need an older motherfucker, you know what I'm saying, that got a lot to lose, like myself. I need me a grown motherfucker that ain't going to tell on me. That's what I need. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to get on uh, ChristianMingle.com. You know what I'm saying? Looking for me a good wholesome deacon or pastor. Somebody lead the fucking flock around this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So if I tell on your bitch ass, you're going to lose everything. You're going to keep the secret. Shit. Anyway, uh, real quick. Being cheated on and stuff. I, I talk a lot about that, you know, but I don't know about other women. Ain't nobody in this motherfucking crowd that got cheated on and shit. They don't want to keep it real with a bitch. I'm the only one being cheated on and shit. When women get cheated on, fellas, y'all don't know what y'all do to us. You know what I'm saying? We sit at home and we plot shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was sitting at home one day and I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I heard the story from my husband. A lying motherfucker. That's how I felt. I was like, let me call this bitch up and get the truth. You know what I'm saying? This bitch ain't got no reason to lie to me. So in my head, I played it out how this conversation is going to go. I know what kind of females my husband like. Me, motherfucker. Cute. Dixie bitches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. A dainty bitch. Kind of sort of. Y'all see how much I can. Anyway, in my head, this is what I said. This is how my conversation went out on this one Friday night. <laughs> The ringtone is real pleasant because I'm pleasant. She said, Hello? I said, Hello? Hello, Barbara? 
Mr. Shirley, you know what I'm saying? I was calling about some woman to woman bullshit. You know what I'm saying? The man you fucking, he mine. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave alone now. You know what I'm saying? You got the dick, move on. You know what I'm saying? That's what I felt like the conversation was going to be like. We was going to band together. You know what I'm saying? The bitch was going to console me. That's what I was feeling. So when I really ended up calling this broad, this heifer was so ratchet. So rowdy. This bitch probably had tattoos all over her fucking face. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the bitch. This, when I call the bitch, this is her ringtone. And this is my real phone call, you guys. Ring a ling a ling. <laughs> oh, ring a ling a ling. I was like, uh oh, ring a ling. Ring a ling a ling. She said, Hello? I said, Ooh, bitch, nothing. Click. I had to hang the phone up. Fuck it, I don't want to talk to that hoe, you know what I'm saying? That's the hoe that's going to give me the whole spill about how big my husband dick is. Bitch, I already know that's why I ain't left the nigga, you know what I'm saying? God damn. I just recently had a, uh, well, I got a birthday coming up, and last year, my husband, you know, this is what made me kind of give in, too, because even though he did what he did, I was like, ooh, he's so sweet. You know, my husband got me that new Beamer that came out or whatever, the latest one, whichever one it was. So I was like, all right, that's a good way to kiss ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so since everybody know about my hurt and was kind of talking about us and dogging me out, I posted my Beamer on Facebook with me in front of it, and I was like, yeah, bitches, get y'all one, you know what I'm saying? My nigga about this, uh-huh, forgive and forget, bitch, you know what I'm saying, so I saw my, my Facebook post, right, it took about a week before me and my homegirls was rolling around, I got pulled over, found out the car was stolen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it's all good, it's all good, I don't give a fuck, it's the thought that count, I don't give a fuck if the family was in the trunk, you know, I rolled that motherfucker a week, you know what I'm saying, I had a ball in it, god damn it, shit, I don't give a fuck, he still loved me, god damn it. Thank y'all for the laughs. Thank you for the laughs. <laughs> All right, look. The women ain't gonna agree with me with this one, but the men will. And don't nobody judge me, god damn it. When you've been with a man so long, first of all, I've been with my husband 25 years. You know what I'm saying? My husband love blowjobs. You know what I'm saying? Woo! And, you know, he, but he, you know, me and they talk shit because after a while you've been together so long, we start sucking your dick a little lazy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'll be sucking on my husband's dick, you know what I'm saying? Worried about, you know, like, damn, did I put the clothes in the dryer? I know I'm sucking in this shit. I, I grab it and I hold it and look around. Let me see. Oh, no. <laughs> he like me, come on. Shit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, babe. Don't let one let Law and Order be on and shit. I be watching Law and Order. You want me to suck your dick with Law and Order on? Uh, I be going in on them and shit. Something happened. You know, it's going to dun dun. I be like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit, baby. Did he kill her? You know? <laughs> That's that, that's that I don't give a fuck about sucking your dick, suck dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit. Anyway, real quick, um, oh, I asked my husband, you know, uh, what you did is what you did. I just want to know what I did to make you do what you did. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I was lacking somewhere in my marriage. Maybe I wasn't doing something right besides watching Law & Order sucking your dick. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, but I said, you know what? I'm going to give you an ultimatum. You got one option. You got one just pick anything that you want to do in our marriage. Skank, dirty, nasty, and I'm with it. But we're going to do it one time. We're going to do it one time only, and I'm going to shut the shit down. I don't want to do it no more. I don't want to talk about it no more. My husband being a thug, you know what I'm saying, at 48 years old, he was like, shit, babe. Like, shit, I, I want to have a threesome. Of course you want to have a threesome. You're a grown-ass man. That's cool. Every man want a threesome, and that's a bad bitch who could do that for him. So I decided, fuck it. You know what? I got that one homegirl in my little clique I roll with, little hoe ass bitch. She'll do it for me, though. You know what I'm saying? Her name Melissa. I talked to Melissa. I got at her. For my husband's birthday, I want to do this threesome. After that shit is over, I don't want to discuss the shit no more. Let's not ever talk about it again. You know what I'm saying? No sneak, sneak around my back. You know what I'm saying? So Melissa, my homegirl, she was like, I'm down to fuck your husband, Miko. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but are you sure you want that bitch? Because first of all, your husband cute. Second of all, I heard that dick big. Third of all, you know how this mouthpiece work, bitch. I said, all right, bitch, damn. You know what I'm saying? You got to discuss it again. Make a long story short, my husband's birthday come. Me, him, Melissa, we in the room, and we doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? We getting it in. 
Now, I'm not going to lie, ladies. I ended up enjoying the shit. You know what I'm saying? The shit lasted about a year long. You know what I'm saying? We done, we done moved this bitch to our extra bedroom in the house. You know what I'm saying? For just when we need you moments. You know what I'm saying? That became every night, you know? But it was one particular night I didn't want Melissa in my bedroom. I wanted to make love to my husband all by myself. But I didn't verbalize that to him, you know? So we making love. And he didn't ask for her. I was cool with that. I was like, okay, oh, he loved me. He ain't worried about her. Fuck her. You know what I'm saying? We doing our thing. And my husband bent over and he whispered in my ear, hey, hey, babe, go get Melissa. <laughs> I instantly got pissed off. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck. But I had to remember what my mama said years ago. You took that nigga back, you accepted it, you do what you can to please that motherfucker. I was like, okay, cool. I jumped up. I was like, all right, I'm going to go get this bitch. I'm butt-ass naked with my navel ring and my fat muffin top and shit. Say it like just a waving all in the air. I walk to this bitch room, but they ain't even knock on the door. I just kick it in. Boom! Bitch, get up. My husband wants you. You know what I'm saying? I walked to the closet and shit. I pulled her off the cardboard box. I stuck the tube in her. I started pumping her up and shit, right? Oh, y'all thought I had a real bitch in my house? I ain't motherfucking stupid. I ain't dumb and shit. That motherfucker should have verbalized he wanted a bitch that was breathing. You know what I'm saying? I told Melissa too. I told my husband Melissa before we started these little games and shit. I set him down. Hey, Melissa, I ain't playing with you. And my husband, I ain't playing with you. Ain't no fucking when I'm gone. When, I, when y'all by yourself, ain't no fucking. You know what I'm saying? Come home one night, this bitch squeaking all up in my motherfucking bed and shit. Fuck that shit. She all duct taped up around her waistline and shit because I done had to stab that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Just whistle the bitch out. Just ow! Bitch, I said, oh, ain't no sucking and fucking when I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? She cost me a lot of money, though, so we still play with her, you know? <laughs> when my husband, you know what I'm saying, when he want to do freaky shit, I'd be like, nigga, get Melissa. Get Melissa, nigga. It's just that now, while he getting his bow job from her and shit, I got to keep my foot on the ass and keep pumping her out. I'm like, go on, girl, go on, Melissa. Because that bitch mouth won't open all the way. That bitch just whistled, uh -uh. That bitch be blowing in the wind and shit. Bitch, go on do your thing. Shit. I told my husband, you better enjoy that shit. And my husband, old perverted ass nigga, he be there like, yeah, go on, Lisa. He got her head all in a knot and shit, cause she ain't just, she almost deflated. He like, go on, bitch, harder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's some old tramp ass shit. A, we ain't no perverts, a little bit. Real quick, real quick before I go, you know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody talking about my love life. We all family in here. Shit, this shit ain't going nowhere, right? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it ain't going nowhere, right? So, <laughs> anyway, real quick before I go, comedy is one of the greatest things I ever chose to do besides divorce my husband. I mean, uh, marry my husband. Um, <laughs> Y'all give it up for comedy. This shit is the scariest thing in the world. But let me tell you something. Thank you. Let me tell you something. When I started off doing comedy, I thought because I was funny at school and shit, I was a class clown, I thought I could just be amazing on stage. My homeboy in Compton had a little show and shit, and I was like, hey, let me let me get on here and, and get five minutes to your crowd because he started up. He had a grand opening of his club he got. It was all performers, no comedians. I was like, let me get up there, get on stage for five minutes, throw some shit out there and pump your crowd up. We backstage, me and my husband. And I got nervous because homie was like, yeah, you go out there, do your shit, get off my stage, Miko. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm backstage with my husband and I looked at him. I said, babe, I don't know what I got myself into. I'm kind of nervous now. What if I go out here and these motherfuckers boo me, babe? He was like, bitch, ain't nobody gonna boo you. You go out there, you do your shit. Somebody boo you, I'll go out here and pistol with one of these niggas. Go do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. You know, I go on stage and shit, and I hit the crowd with my first three strongest jokes that I know would hit. These motherfuckers didn't laugh at me. I mean, it was so quiet in that goddamn club, I could hear niggas' eyes blinking. You know what I'm saying? It pissed me off. I took it personal. As a comedian, you shouldn't, because if you bomb, you bomb. If you ain't shit, you ain't shit. But I took it personal. I told the crowd, you know what? Fuck all y'all then. I'm Tamiko Kirkland. I started walking off stage, right? This dude in the back, boo, bitch. You not funny. You ain't no fucking comedian, bitch. You better stick to your county job. Bitch, how you don't work for the county? I work for Taco Bell, bitch. Fuck you. Anyway. 
So I get back on stage because I was offended. And what I am, I'm ignorant as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I got I crawled back on stage and I went to the spotlight guy. I said, hey, real quick, put the spotlight on this asshole in the back. I'm going I'm to tear his ass apart before I leave. He put the spotlight on this motherfucker. It was my goddamn husband. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. I'm Tamiko Kirkland. Yo, give it up once again, y'all. To me, Y'all know who was the 85 South Show is. That's DC Young, DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller, Clayton English, and Chico wow. Bean. They won an award this year for having the most entertaining comedy show on YouTube, all right? The people voted for them to win. Once again, y'all give it up for, for DC. DC and Carlos Miller. Carlos Miller and DC putting in that work. Shout out to the homies over there, you know what I'm saying? Now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, tonight's host, the one and only West Side Rider. Y'all make some noise for my homie, my kinfo, the one and only TC Comedian. It's probably not as cold out over there as it is over here. It's cold as fuck. I was like, and man, it's all about, like, you know, let a nigga in, nigga. I text you, I called you, he spoke about me being like, you acting like the bitches from my job, nigga. Like, they be on me, like, TZ, you said you were gonna be here and you still were here. And then I got Keith looking around Morris talk, at the door looking at me talking about I'd open it if he wasn't late, you know. This nigga just got some hair to braid, nigga. I ain't never seen this nigga with hair on his goddamn hair. Nigga got hair and he braided his hair, he wanna talk shit. Let him know. Nigga, shout out to Tamiko. Man, Tamiko, fuck that shit up. Tamiko, what's up, girl? Man. I can tell you, I had some niggas I wish cheated on me. Like, there was times I wanted to get out the relationship. I'm like, can a bitch come along, please? God damn, give this nigga some pussy. Please, I'm not doing it and you're still being faithful. What the fuck? That shit was crazy. I was, oh, man. But I've been cheated on, I wanted to say. I just, you know, I was younger, so it didn't mean nothing. Like, now I start my relationships a different way. Anyone could val you know, if you've been with me, I start my relationships by telling everybody I fucking trip. <laughs> like, don't do it. Go to my references. They're gonna tell you that motherfucking trips, okay? <laughs> Line 10, you know, clause A and B. She will act a fucking fool in public. <laughs> that's that's pretty much me. So I've like now I set that bar, so it's kinda like people really think about it like, do I wanna? Uh, I don't want it. <laughs> I want to say, even though 2021 is here, a whole bunch of you motherfuckers owe 2019 an apology, okay? So many people wish 2019 away. Yeah, right. So many people, like you always do, like you start a year halfway in in April, you're like, oh, nigga, fuck that, because the next year's all me, nigga, and the next year's mine, nigga. Right, right. Niggas was claiming 2020 in fucking May of 2019. Like, y'all treated 2019 like a side bitch, nigga. Right, right. Like, y'all treated 2020 like the yeah, bitch. Like, yeah. like, you just knew 2020 was gonna be this bad bitch. Like, you had this forecast. So you treated 2019 like a side hoe. Got rid of that bitch. Quit the bitch. Bye. You left to the... You know what I'm saying? That going back to having the bottom bitch. You left the bomb bottom bitch for the raggedy ass bitch that got the shit. Right. Now the world got it. Right. Now we trying to get away from this bitch. But you prayed for this bitch back in 2019, nigga. Remember? You was like, fuck everything, nigga. 2020, my year, nigga. <laughs> nigga, how many people had the homie claim in 2020? I was like, but I found it funny. Did nobody have a New Year's resolution this year, huh? Niggas was just like, Hey, we just gonna hope we get out of it, nigga. Hey, nigga, you can't make no money, nigga. Rob somebody, nigga. Hey, everybody doing it, nigga. It's a millions of people robbing, nigga. Why not? How they gonna find you, nigga? That out of all the millions, nigga, go on and get a couple thousand, nigga. Like the mentality, right? It's just gone. It's just, it's savage as fuck. And I knew shit was crazy because uh, <laughs> with the fires and shit that's been going on, the other night I was out just smoking a blunt and I see two coyotes just walking down my fucking street. And I'm like, 
this is the day we in in LA where motherfucking coyotes is just walking You're down the shit in the street and shit. <laughs> and you know it's a fucking coyote. It, it's a when it starts off as an ugly ass dog, but then this motherfucker gets uglier and up, and then you like, wait a minute, you wanna you wanna eat me. <laughs> Nigga got the pepper spray. I don't even know if that did anything. I don't, it didn't do shit. Honestly, it just pissed people off when I did it. I was spraying myself and these times are fucking changing. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but shout out to all the comics, the artists that are here tonight. Clap it up for yourself, guys. Put the music on. Put the music on. Put the music on. So a lot of the comedians didn't show up, but we got an appreciation award that we uh, pass out every year to the comedians that support us extremely tough. Every time I do the show, every time I go live, these two comedians right here, they retweet us, they, uh, they, they comment, they call me, they talk to me, they get it in. And y'all know them, and y'all love them, and I'm going to give it up to the one and only Rodney Perry. All right, I'm not sure if you're from Atlanta or not, but shout out to the ATL. And the next one is the one and only coming out of Chicago, the female comedian icon, Just Nish. Shout out to Jay. Yo, y'all, hit me up to get the trophies at Duke NG Radio Station, baby. All right, you guys. Uh, so we're going to keep it going. Um, ready? What we going? What we coming into today? What we coming into? So, oh, shit. Okay. 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 You guys, crap it up. We got a new a comedian I've never seen yet, so I'm kind of excited. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Kanisha Bucks. Yeah. Oh, Kanisha Shell pump number four after this, like, hey, puppy. 
this baby. Like, oh my God, yes, I love you. <laughs> my sister always be like, ugh, you gonna end up on Maury. I'm like, first of all, bitch, I take my morning after pills like Skittles, shake them up, shake them up. I'll taste the rainbow. <laughs> but all somebody would go on Maury proud as fuck, like, line them up, Maury, somebody going home with a baby, nigga. <laughs> I just want to see a dude run off like she told me she loved me. Like, man, I told all y'all that. Because <laughs> I like feeling like I'm in a relationship when I'm home with them. Am I the only one? It's not about raw dick and lies that be like, make it feel good. Like, oh, I love you. You know, that shit feels good. Yeah. I see a few people got uncomfortable because I said, ho, listen, I'm taking the word ho back. It's too many negative conversations associated right. with the word ho, pal, educated ho. Listen, right. as women... We're always told you don't want to be a hoe. Everybody in here remember the girl from high school that everybody called a hoe. Right. Well, guess what? I went to my reunion and apologized to the bitch and was like, listen, you was ahead of your time, but I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shit. Because yeah. I feel like women, we get rules out the gate. You should be able to count your sexual partners on one hand. Y'all know that. If it's somebody at home or in here who could do a raise it in the air, like, yeah, I got this shit, and ball it up into a fist, bitch, and punch yourself in the face. Because <laughs> you missing out. You hear me? Don't listen to this. Beat your own ass. For all you know, you got five terrible dicks back to back. You hear me? Just pow, pow, pow. TDC. She said, what's TDC? Terrible dick in the city and it's out here. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. And I didn't even know my numbers was high. This is the crazy part. I didn't know my numbers was high until I went to Santa Monica Clinic. On oh, my mama, they are so unprofessional over there. Do not go to Santa Monica Clinic. Because they asked you that question, like, how many sexual partners have you had? And I'm like, shit, I'm grown. I put my shoulder into my number. I was just like, <laughs> throw my paperwork in. He gonna look at my shit and go, ooh, you're a go-getter, aren't you? <laughs> I felt like I had to start explaining my shit. He had the British lights with the lights in the back. That shit was fine. He had a car to go off campus to get lunch. Like, But in the middle of me explaining my dicky shit, I realized. <laughs> that ladies, if your numbers are high, it's not even your fault. It's these men's fault. Because when you used to go out, it used to be one or two cute dudes in a group, right? Right, right. Now when you go out, the whole goddamn group look good. <laughs> like, what did you motherfuckers start hanging out together? Right. Y'all need to break some of this shit up. <laughs> now you gotta have a meeting with your homegirls in the club. Listen, listen, listen. They probably not gonna marry none of us. Let's just go take these niggas. <laughs> Because I'm to the left, to the left, you 
generation, everything you own in a box to the left. <laughs> Some of us got grandkids old enough to help put grandpa out. Hey, go grab your grandfather Jordan to put him in the box. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> He'll be here in a minute, baby. <laughs> I'm the type of grandmother to get back on with a dog chat filter like, hey, see you again. <laughs> <laughs> we don't gotta put up with Willie Earl and them no more. Devontae, pick a piece. <laughs> Cause grandma's is making way more money. <laughs> I'ma be at the 7-Eleven next to the Hot Cheetos waiting on a young nigga. Do you hear me? <laughs> I don't know what they put in Hot Cheetos, but these little niggas was fine. <laughs> what would you do if your mom was at home? <laughs> and the only way to feed her was to sleep with a cougar for a little bit of money. That's a call back from Willie. That shit was popping. Don't you? play the take back. <laughs> Did I tell y'all I hate kids yet or we haven't got there? <laughs> Fuck these raggedy motherfuckers. I feel sorry for anybody who got to homeschool these niggas. You know what I'm saying? School pictures. Hey, get dressed and come to the kitchen so we can send this to your grandmother. This is some bullshit. Because <laughs> I had to raise my nephew. So this is the thing. It's like I had to raise my nephew and he's one of the like overweight kids. He got an eating disorder. Every time you see something to eat, you want to order it. <laughs> and he do shit to get on my nerves like I took him to McDonald's and I have no idea what a light is I'm just throwing that out there so let me know I had took him to McDonald's and this motherfucker was in my back seat just auntie <laughs> his voice is heavy for his age auntie see if they'll substitute the toys for fries <laughs> just bust his ass in the face because he do shit. Like, two years ago, he took the school pictures, and I don't even know when he changed into the shirt, but I get the motherfucking back, and the shirt says, Subway, no way. <laughs> Bring me the shirt. Bring me the shirt. I flip the shirt over on the back and go, Jared's a bitch. I'm like, this man's a bitch. Because most kids, when they come home from school, they want to watch Spongebob. You know, I, 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 I. You know that motherfucker. Not him. He want to watch Rachel Ray's 30 minute meals and convince me he can make them in 15 minutes. <laughs> if they put the Salisbury steak on medium high, it cook eight minutes faster. <laughs> They're not using paprika though. And he's one of those kids that puts stuff in the microwave and sing and dance and wait for it to get done. Just Popcorn on this way. Look at the bay rising. Look at the bay rising. And what did they say growing up? Don't stand in front of the microwave because you can get radiation poisoning, right? right? So I felt like I had to pass this information on to the youth. I said, Cartier, don't stand in front of the microwave. You could get radiation poisoning. You know, his ass gonna look at me and say, if they didn't want me to see my food cooking, they would have put a window on it. I'm just gonna watch the progression of the food in front of my face. So now we both in AA. I'm an AA for my alcoholism because it's clear I'm drunk. <laughs> and he's an AA. Every time I try to eat something, I gotta go, AA, Cartier, cook that shit. <laughs> Before I get out of here, though, because I don't want to monopolize the time, I gotta say, I got this is my educational part of the show. I feel like we live in a time where women we have been reduced to hair, makeup, ass, and titties. <laughs> like that's all it takes to be a woman. Right. And before I go into it, I I feel like you should do whatever you want to do with your body. You should love whoever you want to love. I'm not judging that. When I get drunk, I like women. I'm a trans drinker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for women, we keep getting the short end of the motherfucking stick. And it started for me when I really realized it when they gave the Woman of the Year award to a bitch who ain't even been a woman a full year. Like, I'm at the house like, oh, they got me 50 shades of fucked up. Because <laughs> I don't mind, I don't even mind you getting an award, but you got to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? Because that bitch beat out a, a woman who had a baby in the car and held it. An eight-year-old bitch in a wheelchair raised $2 million for whatever. And I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. 
Bitch, you haven't even been here long enough to have $32 worth of change at the bottom of your purse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, women, if we all dumped our purse out, we could stop world hunger today. Right, right. How are you going to get Woman of the Year Award and you ain't even had titties long enough to have the bra with the shit that come out the side? Right, and you're like, bitch, I'm not getting rid of this motherfucker because my titties still look good. In it. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to get Woman of the Year Award and you ain't never burnt out no pants right here? Right, right, right. But they're your favorite pants, so you're like, bitch, I'm not throwing these away. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? How can you get one of the year award and your pinky toe ain't died four years ago, but you still put on these shoes, you know your ass ain't fit, and at the end of the night you gotta tiptoe and pray to get to the car to help me follow. I swear to God I will never wear these shoes again. To me, go get the car, bitch, you know what I'm saying? But then you stop at the taco man and get some food, bitch. I thought you couldn't walk, but I can stand. The bitch is hungry. You know what I'm saying? You can't get woman of the year award if you ain't ever wrapped up no food and put it in your purse so the nigga you've been talking to all night don't see you eating. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, nigga, this is alcohol weight. This is alcohol weight. You know what I'm saying? How can you get woman of the year award and you ain't never fucked a nigga car up, put the sugar in a gas tank, right, right. break out the windows, tell him he ain't shit, his mom ain't shit, his yeah. granny ain't shit, then come to his house the next day like, well, you know what? I love you. Do you want to talk or not? <laughs> you don't type of balls to take the fuck up his shit and be like, but well, I still love you. Let's right, talk. Right. Can't get no award. You can't get Woman of the Year award if you don't even have neck muscles like that. You know how long we've been fighting on shit like this, bitch? Your neck ain't even strong enough to get the goddamn award, bitch. You can't get Woman of the Year award if you ain't never been on your last strike at work. You got one pad left and the wings stick together and you're like, God, please help me get to work to the Lord. I can't even afford to get fired. And then you got to turn into an innovator. Only a real woman will look at the tissue and build a pad and be like, bitch, I'm not going to get a motherfucking pad. I'm not about to be late. And then go into, hey, bitch, you see something? You see something? You see something? Stop fucking playing with us, yo. You got to put your work in is all I'm saying. You can get there, but put the work in first. That's right. I had a good time with y'all. Yeah. Keep supporting you and G Underground Comedy Radio yeah. and everything going down before I get out of here. God damn, I got to lose some weight. My ass is breathing heavy. <laughs> it's, oh, no, there's no mic stand. So before I get out of here, I feel like I've been here to do one thing. And if I can get one woman in here at home to do this, I feel like God has really, truly fulfilled my purpose. Yeah. Ladies, no matter what, cheat on your man in case his ass is cheating on you. <laughs> <laughs> And so, 
then he stopped being a lawyer, and then he became a social worker. Now he's a chef. So anyway, you guys, put your hands together for the Playboy of Comedy, Trey Love! <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Yo, I fucks with TC. Yo, I fucks with TC. TC, you already know. I tell motherfuckers in a minute. You the handsomest female comic in the game. <laughs> That's a handsome ass girl. You hear me? You hear me, girl, goddammit. I don't know who the handsome is. I swear to God, between you and Queen Latifah, I'd be like, boy, that was some handsome ass women, boy. You, you better understand me. Hey, motherfuckers think it's a game. I love TC for real. TC, the only motherfucking female I know that, like, you know, I'm Trey Love, the Playboy Comedy. I'll step in the place. I'll be like, I'll shut it down. When I see TC, I'll be like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Because see, TC pull bitches like I pull bitches. No offense if she brought you here. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> TC, that's, that's my name. That's my Oh, that's your PMA? Okay, good, good. Because, you know, TC, I'm telling you, boy, that nigga rotate hoes, boy. That nigga, that's a handsome ass girl, boy. That's my friend, though, boy, boy, with a handsome man. All right. Now, check this out, motherfuckers. I know we on Zoom. I know we on all that shit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do y'all how I would do a, 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 even though it's a real show, I'm going to do it like it's 3,000 motherfuckers in here, like it's an arena, okay? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, which camera I'm looking at? All of them. All of them. Oh, this is dick nigga, this is paparazzi in this bitch. I love cameras, goddammit. You know, I was all right, you and you and you and you're gonna love me. I'm the I get to the motherfucking people, that's what I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reintroduce myself, right? DJ, get me some cold shit. It don't matter what it is, but I want some shit like the bang when I reintroduce myself. You know what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna reintroduce myself. And when I come back to the stage, I need y'all to clap like Michael Jackson reincarnated from the dead. You hear me like I'm the greatest of all time coming all the way back. All right, y'all ready? All right, here it is. Hold on, I'm gonna step backstage. Hold on, I can't even. Yeah, I'm gonna step backstage. I'm gonna show y'all how to do this. Watch this, watch this. BET Comic, you wait for your comedy jam to open with the show the David Letterman show. This nigga ain't been on none of that. <laughs> and I promise to God, if he wasn't doing comedy, he'd probably be somewhere stealing somebody's car. I want y'all to give it up for the one and only Playboy Comedy, Mr. Trailer! That's it, that's it. So let me go on and get to it. Uh, where my broke people at? Broke people make some noise. Broke people up. All right, all right. How many of y'all know the difference between black broke and white broke? If you know the difference between black broke and white broke, raise your hand. I'm going to show you the difference. Black rich. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Show you black broke. White broke. Let me show you white broke. White broke. White person get their bank statement in the mail. <laughs> Open it up. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, where's the rope? I only have twenty thousand. This is it. That's white bro. Let me show you good old fashioned Negro bro. Here go Negro bro. We get our thing in the man. We open it up. Let me see something here. Shit. Hell. Negative three hundred. 
<laughs> Shit, I might as well smoke the rest of this weed. <laughs> Fuck y'all, we'll smoke our way through anything. Any crackheads in here? Crackheads? I'm telling you, you gotta be careful doing them drugs, man. You gotta be careful doing drugs. I, mean, I had a joint one time, this LA weed, man. This shit should be illegal. I'm telling you, they legalized shit, the worst thing they could have did. I hit this motherfucking LA weed, man. Look, th this how the shit had me, y'all. I hit it one time. I, I said, Yes. You know why? Because a crackhead can sell a motherfucker anything. Crackhead fucked around and sold me a paper bag one time. I ain't lying, you should have seen him. He rolled him on the app. He had his whole routine. He's like, man, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Ha! Yeah. Nigga got these paper bags, dog. I said, man, what the fuck am I going to do with your paper bag? He said, man, check this out. Check this out. You can open it up. <laughs> and then you could close it up. And I'm willing to sell it to you for $3. I was like, shit, nigga, don't give me that paper bag. I'm telling you, you gotta be careful, man. That's shit. Uh, I was so high the other night. We make you do fucked up shit. I'm in the tub with my girl. We getting high. You know women shave their legs, right, Bobby? You know that. Women shave their legs in the tub. <laughs> I'm so motherfucking high. I'm in the tub with my girl. I looked at her. I was like, give me that razor. <laughs> Man, come to find out I had some nice ass legs, though. <laughs> Why you bullshitting? I was easy, breezy, beautiful cover boy in that motherfucker, man. I'm telling you, I was so high. I'm looking at my girl. I swear, I was high. I'm looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking at me. Looking at her, looking right back at me. Still looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking right back at her, looking right the fuck back at me. Looking at her, looking at me, looking at her, looking at me. I say, baby. Anybody ever tell you look like Morgan Freeman? Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> well, bitch, you do. <laughs> you gotta be careful, man. I'm telling you. I love doing drugs, man. I mean, um, smoking weed. <laughs> I'm saying, I love smoking weed. I love smoking weed. You gotta be careful doing that cocaine, man. I'm gonna tell you something. I got some white friends. Oh, my fucking white friends. Fuck you, nigga friends. I got some white friends, boy. I got the capital. I got capital motherfucking white friends. I got I got white friends that get on that cocaine. <laughs> Nigga, they gonna bust down the capital. I'm telling you. I got white friends. Man, my white homie hit me the other night and said, Trey Love. I said, what's up? He said, man, I'm coming to get you, man. I said, man, okay. I said, man, what we gonna do? Man, what you think we're gonna do? Man, we're going to do some cocaine. I said, okay, cool. Cool. But I got this nigga. We did some cocaine. Why the motherfucker ain't tell me cocaine will have your ass up all night oh, waiting on somebody that ain't even coming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the living room with my hat and coat. My daughter say, Daddy, who we waiting on? I say, we already here. <laughs> Gotta be careful doing them drugs, man. I'm telling you. What were people like that, that still, I hear the ladies up here when I was watching the show. I got to give a shout out. I didn't know if I was at a comedy show or a strip club because I swear to God, between Tamiko with her goal, uh, platinum, uh, <laughs> thank you, hair, and, 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 and bedroom, uh, 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 situation, she came up here and, and was gyrating and shit, <laughs> and, and, and it, was, it was, it was going this away and that away, and then, uh, uh, Kanisha bust your ass, I'm telling you, huh, woo, it was, Ass everywhere, ass everywhere. I was sitting in this, is this a comedy show or a I, look, I don't know why you motherfuckers ain't throwing tips in here. There's a lot of titties. I'm telling you, a lot of titties on this stage early. I was like, God damn, I'm telling you, boy. I'm shit. Woo! I'm shit. Where my, my single man at? Single man, where y'all at? Okay. All right. Now y'all tell me, am I the only one that was watching the show up here and noticed that the first three comedians? Looked like they was ex strippers. 
<laughs> am, I, am I the only one? Am I the only one that been? Am I the only one? All of, all of them, all three of them. I, I swear to God, when y'all look at the tape, be like, that nigga Trey one line. That nigga Trey one line. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's like if you went to the strip club ten years ago, all three of them hoes was there. <laughs> they, was, they was there, they was yada yada yada, they was there. They was at the strip club 10 years ago. Somebody told these hookers, girl, you cute. You need to tell jokes to get on stage so I'm not in here doing this. <laughs> Bring it! Man, I love it, I love it. I ain't lying, boy, I'm telling you. I would tell all three of the ass stuff, I'm telling you. All right, boy, who? But see, I, shit, I've been and got myself hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because Kanisha, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I like thick women. I love pretty thick women. But Kanisha look like she'll put a hurting on a nigga. You understand me? I mean, all that, all, ooh, girl, you are blessed with, with, ooh. Look, <laughs> let me tell you something. You got one of them ass, let me tell you what kind of ass you got. Your ass look like two little fat boys fighting. You hear me? Just, <laughs> when you walk. You ever seen two fat boys fight? Two little fat boys, about eight years old, fight. You ever seen them two little fat boys? They be fighting. That's how Kanisha ass look when she walk. I'm bored. The boys is getting away. Fight. Don't tell you, boy. Good lord. Good lord. And 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 um. And I seen your titties. I mean, you have breast titties. I don't want you to call them, but all I kept thinking was, got milk. I swear. I, just, I, I ain't bullshit. I'm telling you, like I said, you give me a. But hey, look, I'm booking these hookers everywhere. It's gonna be Trey Love and Ladies Night. I'm just having Ladies Night. It's gonna be the Trey Love. The Trey Love Ladies Review is what I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have a goddamn review. Just, just come to the show. It's gonna be jokes and asses and titties. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I'm telling a joke. Now I'm telling a joke. I'm telling a joke. Hey, here go one of my jokes. I use this one on stage when I'm performing and making money and touring all over the country. Are you ready for that joke? I'm gonna present it to you. <laughs> what did the left nut tell the right nut? He said, man, me and you got to stick together because this brother in the middle, <laughs> he thinks he's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was watching Isaiah's breasts and I thought to myself, what would the left saggy titty say to the right saggy titty? It would say, you and I are going to need some support. <laughs> Otherwise, people are going to think we're nuts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like... With the left butt cheek to the right butt cheek. He said, man, if me and you stick together, we can stop all oh, this shit. All this shit. Anybody in here watch the news? Watch the news? Yeah. Why? Oh, who watched the news? Watch the news. So you, you saw the news. Did y'all see about the sperm bank robbery? Y'all didn't see it? Oh, it was on the news. It was a sperm bank. Let, let me tell you. The lady was in the job. She was doing her thing. She, she just put the sperm out there going the way she was supposed to. Guy walked in with a massive gun. Yes. He had a mask on. He had a gun in his hand. He put a gun in the woman's face. She rolls her hands up. She says, sir, this is not a financial institution. This is a sperm bank. He said, I know what the fuck it is. <laughs> now go back there and get that goddamn sperm. So she went back. She did what the nigga asked. So she got the sperm. She bought it to him. He said, now drink it. She snapped off. Just like you said. You said black women. When I said that, went, skirt. Black women were not something no big. What's wrong with y'all? When I said, uh, she told him to drink, they went, skirt. Uh, she stopped eating her chicken. She went, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't play about the same. Look, y'all, y'all gotta get it together. Y'all wanna keep this in your life. I talk to y'all about that later. Anyway, I said, drink it. She's like, I'm not gonna drink no sperm. He said, look, bitch, if you don't drink that sperm, I'm gonna blow your head clean off. So she was like, you know what? Fuck it. <sighs> Today is not a good day to die. <laughs> she drunk the sperm. She was like, shit, damn, great, let's do it. Damn. The guy took the mask right. off. The guy took the mask off. It was her husband. He said, I bet it was that so hard. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> but that's so fucking hard. I love doing stand up, man. I love doing this shit. God has blessed my career. I'm able to do this shit, travel places, come places like this place here. Yeah, yeah! yeah. yeah. Inside! Up in here, like, we here. We're, I'm in Covina somewhere, right? I'm in Covina. Okay. I like to say the right place because, like, I'm, I'm kind of like a. I'm not a California native, so they got me somewhere out here. And, um,. It's, it's, it's a hell of a lot of Mexicans. I'm going to say this. It's, the only niggas I've seen is us in here. So I'm, I'm letting y'all know. When I was outside, it was, you know, it was a bunch. Like, I blow this thing. This, look. Look at this. See, she stand, see? They, she represent. Oh, yay. Heather. Yeah. I'm telling you, a lot of Mexicans. Like, but I like Mexicans. I deal with Mexicans. It's the white people. I got problems with the capital. 
black white house. Anyway, I don't fuck with white people. But I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm careful. I go places, I do shows. I was in Texas. I was doing a show in Texas. This woman came up to me after the show. She was freaky, too. I could tell she was freaky. She, she, damn, nigga, did you fall? <laughs> the DJ failed. You're like, oh, shit, nigga. He got a pee. Anyway, so I'm doing a show time. Freaky woman came with me after the show. I'm not lying. She came right to me. She's like, mm, let me tell you something. <sighs> Trailer. I enjoyed your comedy so much. I'm going to take you back to my apartment, and I'm going to do some nasty, freaky, kinky, sexual things with you. I looked at that woman. I said, I don't know what kind of vibe you picked up from me or what kind of energy you think you got from me. I said, but you figured that shit out. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to her apartment, right? We went to her apartment, right? She walked across the threshold and got naked. I am a gentleman. I am a gentleman. She going to get naked, right? I am a gentleman. So I got naked too. So check this out, right? <laughs> So I got naked, right? I got naked. And then she reached in a drawer and then she pulled out some 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 uh whips. I said, wait one minute, goddammit, hold on. Then she pulled out some chains. I said, God damn it, what, what is what is this? Put my other arm to this other bed post. I did that. Oh, fellas, I started kissing on her, rubbing on her, touching on her. My dick got so hard a midget could do pull-ups on that moment. <laughs> so I'm in that bit ready. I'm a ready, ready. Oh, then she said, then she said in a sexy voice, she said, Trey Love, do what you do best. So I stole her flat screen, her VCR, <laughs> jewelry box, TV, VCR. Uh, thank the white bitch still looking for me, still looking for me now. Nah, I'm telling you, I'm on the run. I'm on the run, G. I'm on the run. Oh, shit, I'm on the run. Joke number five. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm gonna do one of my comedy view jokes for y'all, man. This is an old throwback I did on BET back in 02. I'm gonna do one of my old comedy view jokes. How many of y'all out there is sport fucking? <laughs> sport fucking. Where are my sport fuckers at? Like, okay, let me explain fucking for sport. Fucking for sport. You see Tamiko and Keith back there? Boom, and they just fuck tonight? That's sport fucking. No, that's sport fucking. That's sport. No, that's sport fucking. That's. You know, I know it's called sport fucking, you know, you sport fuck, boom. Like, I have a friend, you know, I'm not going to say her name, but she knows, we sport fuck, you know, we, we, every now and again we just see each other, and it's like, we just, we sport fuck, okay? It's a thing called sport fucking, you know, it's just straight love, you know, <laughs> you know, you be sport fucking, just bam. Like, I'm going to tell you when you do a lot of sport fucking, you do a lot of sport fucking in college. That's where you do a main, a lot of your sport fucking, you experiment, you just bang, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you wanna go to lunch? Yeah. And then she go right to the dorm, sport fuck, boom. <laughs> hey, you wanna smoke? Sport fuck, you know? It's just sport fucking, it's just, it's just you just, oh, oh, hey, let me tell you something. You looking at a nigga that survived open heart surgery, I was in a coma for four days, I had a motherfucking stroke, and guess what? I'm still fucking, you understand me? So when I tell you sport fucking, keep your head. Sport fucking, keep your head. Now I ain't saying I'm quite fucking how I was. Now I'm being honest, but shit, I can lay it down a little bit. Fuck y'all, give me some wine. And some weed. I guess by the time I finish, I'm gonna have so much fun, I don't even care about it. Fuck y'all. Anyway, sport fucking, okay? Get used to the term. Before I get out of here, I gotta think. Let me think. I'm gonna give y'all. Did I give it to y'all? Did y'all did y'all get what y'all came here for? Yeah, you yeah. got yeah. yeah. My motherfuckers. Hey man, shout out, man, man, shout out everybody that showed us love out here, man. Appreciate y'all. My nigga coming up next, keep looking around. Mars, this has been Trey Love. I'm out here. Peace out. <laughs>
But Trey and I go back. And so Trey and I have a history. And so when he mentions his heart surgery, <laughs> the thing about this is this is also the thing he uses to not do shit, not do any labor, you know, not pick up a goddamn chair or do anything for it. So it's, it, you know, it's, I'm glad he healed, but then he used it as a weapon for the rest of his fucking life. Um, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> it as a weapon. <laughs> you did. We want to, uh, I'm going to bring up Man Man. We're gonna yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? Oh, this, is a box. Yeah. this is a box award. This damn. is somebody important. Oh, well, damn. Well, for sure, all the comedians are important. Make some noise for every comedian. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? The great TC hosting tonight's show doing a lovely job. Yeah. T uh, Tamiko Kirkland, yeah. Trey motherfucking love. Keep looking around more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bedroom eyes. Busted. We up in this bitch. Kanisha bust a buzz. Yeah. Yo, this, this award right here is for the top stand-up comedian. And it goes out to the one and only Takara Will. Takara, that's the one I was saying. Congratulations. Hey, yeah, there it is. Let's go, TC. Man. So, uh, okay, what? Okay, DJ, I know. I don't blame you because he walked off. But now I'm back on the stage by myself. Right, right. some music. Yeah. To bring up somebody to not to fall asleep. Nigga, that felt like I took a Xanax. Just... <laughs> All right, you guys, put your hands together for this brother. He's been doing his thing for a long time. Keep look around more as you guys. Please clap it up. DJ ain't got a motherfucking thing. Let's go. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 DJ Eclipse, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a good ass woman right there. <laughs> yeah, you don't care about it. Good, 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 all right, motherfuckers, you're going to be one last job with You better leave me the fuck alone. Mad man, don't play that shit. Right. No. I got some McDonald's. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Nigga, talk about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he wish I would suck it. Nigga, he'd never go home to his motherfucker wherever he went. i will blow his fucking socks off. <laughs> you ever had your socks blown off? <laughs> Hell no. I like to say, you don't fuck with nobody's mama when they listen to the old street music in the 70s. Because when I was growing up, you had to get up when your mama get up. When your mama get up at 6 o'clock, your whole house get the fuck up. These motherfucking kids nowadays sleep to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Nigga, what fucking time do you get up for school? Oh, uh, I missed it. You missed what? And they just, okay, you all right. You better get up tomorrow. Nigga, you been school in the 70s. Nigga, you get the shit beat out of you. Your mama will whoop your ass just for walking to school late. <laughs> These goddamn kids nowadays ain't worth two motherfucking cents. Yeah. I got a daughter, 12 years old. She gets her ass up. That's all she do is get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the fuck she do is get up. Oh. You know, I'm paying for private school for a motherfucking ass. They say, Mr. Morris, your daughter ain't been to school. A uh, motherfucking Zoomer ass. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, that's the way you gotta go nowadays to zoom a motherfucker. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Come on, come on, you better ring your motherfucking bell. What's that motherfucker called? Alert? What is it called? Notify. Yeah. You better notify a motherfucking ass if I find her ass ain't getting up on Zoom. I'm whooping her ass. And I'm gonna give it for TC talking that bullshit about my motherfucking braids. Everybody know I always used to be bald headed. Already. My daughter challenged her daddy. Because, see, my daughter didn't know I had long hair. She's like, Daddy, you, you ain't got no hair. I said, no, because I keep it cut. This is a 12-year-old. She's Mexican and black. Because they have long shit. And they think they shit is better than I shit. You know, we got the afro. You get what I'm saying? That's the real shit. So, right? So, hold on. So, so she said, Daddy, I'm going to challenge you. I said, motherfucker, what you gonna challenge me? You ain't got no motherfucking money. <laughs> you 12 years old. Anything you get is coming from me and your motherfucking mama. 
And if I get from her, I got to give it back to her. So fuck it. You ain't got shit. That's right. So I said, okay, we ain't going to make a bet. I said, I'm going to let my shit grow. My cousin right here started my shit when it was this motherfucking little. I had rat titties in my motherfucker. <laughs> TC mad at me because my shit is coming back. <laughs> you know, see these, these, these motherfuckers women, they gotta put that fake shit in their head to make it longer. Well, my shit ain't fake. Baby, I know your shit ain't fake. Because you paid for it. It ain't fake. Whatever you pay for shit, it ain't fake. No, I know your shit. You see, my shit ain't fake. Mine ain't either. And I ain't got a ball, motherfucker, spotting this motherfucker. Look. And I ain't got shit but motherfucking real hair. Great gold as shit. It's great now. But the motherfucker is an afro. I let my hair grow because I'm shooting a movie. I'm, I'm gonna shoot a movie, so I gotta play this gangster shit. So, you know, a bald head gangster ain't what's happening. You gotta be a nigga with hair. <laughs> you gotta be a nigga with hair when you're a gangster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta be a nigga with hair. You can't be no nigga with no bald head trying to run up on a motherfucker trying to be tough. Nigga, if you don't get your ass away from me, you got to have some hair to be a real nigga. Because <laughs> you got a lot of fruitcakes out here with bald heads. <laughs> I just come up here to support Mad Man. We have a good time. I'm going to cut my hair off again maybe next year. But I can say to everybody support in UNG Comedy Awards show, UNG radio show, I'd like to say thank y'all for letting all our comedians and everybody perform. Yeah! I just come up here always to support Madman because he gives these new comics and a lot of old comics an avenue to be seen. That's right. That's right. And I don't give a fuck about the entertainment field. I never have and I never will. I got into this business to keep my ass out of trouble, right. and it worked. Yes. I've been at my job 35 years for LA County USC Medical Center, six more years of nigga retire, <laughs> yeah. 65, yeah. if God let me will, yeah. live to see it, I had that COVID, that motherfucker ain't no motherfucking joke. Mm. So if any had body get that shit, it ain't no joke. We I didn't eat, places. listen, I didn't eat for three and a half weeks. I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> that wasn't no special diet. That was a nigga, you're going to live today oh, wow. or die today. Oh, wow. So I, I, I tell everybody, the yeah. shit is real. That's right. Fight for your life. My ex-wife had it. She damn near died. <laughs> My daughter, 12-year-old, had it. Her mom had it. So people, listen. If you're out there watching the show, please protect yourself. That's this right. shit right. ain't That's no... It, ain't, it shit is worse than HIV. Give me the goddamn HIV. At least I can go stay alive. <laughs> Magic made it through, goddamn it. I can take it through. Magic Johnson had HIV for 25 motherfucking years. That nigga healthy than a motherfucker. So why in the fuck can I get and be healthy? This motherfucking COVID nigga take you out. So I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. The shit is real. So thank God I made it through it. My daughter made it through it. Her mom made it through it. My ex-wife made it through it. Cause this shit is real, man. This shit ain't no fucking joke. So all you people out there watching us live streaming, y'all want to go out there and party because y'all don't want to be in the house. Y'all want to go out there and do all this bullshit. Cause don't this shit hits you, you gonna stop running the street. My name is Keith Morris. Give it up for UNG Comedy Awards show. Love you, Mad Man. DJ, love you. All comics. TC, bring your fine ass on up here. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Keith, y'all. Yeah. Make some noise, y'all. Keep it around, boys. Yeah. Oh, oh. You know, I kind of, I'm not even gonna lie. I, I'm kind of, DJ Eclipse won a special heart place in my heart tonight. Like, he was up there, and he was like, you ain't gonna get to talk about me, nigga. <laughs> DJ Eclipse. That's the one thing about a DJ, when you on stage, as much as you gotta rely on the DJ, the DJ can fuck all the shit up. 
So DJ Clutch, right when he said something about some dick, he was like, get here. I was like, you know what? You acting up, okay? And I appreciate that. <laughs> so you guys, thank you. We got a couple more words to give out, and then we're going to say goodbye to you guys for this year. Madman, come here. Let's yo, yo, once again, you with the Happy Boys on the fire. Make some more.